Today I'm pleased to introduce Kathleen Looseby to you. Kathleen is the a practicing architect and the New South Wales chapter president of the Australian Institute of Architects. Kathleen has been a leader in the lead up to the work that we're doing to transform the construction industry in New South Wales. She's been at the forefront of conversations with developers, with designers and with constructors and community interest groups. Her work has really played an enormous contribution to where we are right here, right now. Let me introduce Catherine Looseby to you. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you, David. I appreciate being here. Well, it's good to have you. And uh, so let's start by uh, asking you to tell us what you think are the biggest changes that we're going to see or the challenges confronting the industry as we move into the next year. Well, the advocacy that's been involved with the Design and Building Practitioners Bill has been really positive. We've had, through your leadership and encouragement, nearly every sector involved. So we've had all the designers, the engineers, etc., builders, um, various different trades involved, fire, etc., everybody being involved and taking leadership and saying, we need to make a difference. And that's been a really positive step. So what do you think are some of the challenges for the professionals as we look into this immediate future? So we'll now have declared designs. This is a really important step and the definition and the requirements of what those designs are will be mandatory and will be expected as a standard, a bar that can't, that is the absolute minimum. This is a really important step because what's happened in the past is we've had an industry that's been driven by time and cost driving over quality and that's been driving what the deliverables are in a package of documentation. So we've got to a point where we had to do things faster and we've had to do it as, as cheaply as possible because that's what the market has demanded. And what the, what's the outcome of that is that we don't have a minimum set of documents that is mandatory standard for every set of documents that need to go in for a building type. Now we will have that. That will be a minimum standard and everyone must do it. So it will be a level playing field. So Kathleen, what do you see the challenges that are confronting designers as we move forward? Okay, I think the, one of the major challenges at the moment when we say designers and designers meaning the whole gamut. So we've got architects, we've got designs, we've got DDA consultants, BCA consultants, we've got the whole, the whole range, is what is the standard of an ex acceptable uh, professional? Only the Architects Act at the moment actually has a registered regulated situation but we need in this uh, new bill we will move into all designers will be registered, regulated and licensed. That will mean that they must do CPD which is continuing professional development every year to a minimum standard, that they must keep their PI insurance, that they have a, that there's a situation where they can be accountable so going forward on documents, each registered individual will actually have their identified number on those documents, so it's traceable. So the whole accountability becomes really important. And for the, the people who engage designers, they're going to really need to understand that uh, unless a project starts off with a quality kit of appropriate designs, the days of making it up afterwards are coming to an end. So. What are the messages for developers and people who engage designers? That there is a minimum standard and that bar is at a certain level that will guarantee there will be a quality outcome. So whatever declared designs are registered must meet that standard. They must be able to say this documentation will meet the BCA and the required Australian standards. It's not a wish or statement that it, it should or that it is the responsibility of somebody else to do, it will now actually be documented to that level. Kathleen, you've really been uh, at the table with us uh, as we've been looking at the technology that we need to actually enable this legislation going forward. Do you want to share a few thoughts on that with your fellow professionals? Yeah, I think, look, it's actually very exciting. The digital transformation is going to be a major step for all of the industry. So going forward, it means that everybody has a traceability for the information. There'll be a standard format expected for documents and a list of documents that must all be stamped with the individual's 
registration number for whatever their field of expertise is that fits within the DBP bill. That's a really positive step going forward. But that all gets uploaded to e-planning. They'll all be in the one position, which means that it's traceable for that one building there will always be a point to go to and collect all of that information. Now that can be used later on, once they become as built, for uh, first responders to access as well. So we'll actually get to a point where traceability and access and knowledge of how a building can be used, can be used better for end users as well as first responders, which is a perfect ending. Well, it's certainly going to reset the future for even constructors because I can tell you from my feedback from the industry is that constructors are really, they don't like a situation where they're getting drawings that aren't complete, where they're being put under pressure to cut costs and make up design in the field. Yeah. So there's a really good change of narrative occurring for designers, uh, sorry, for constructors yeah. that are going to then feed into the other end of this, which is the as-built drawings. You want to just talk about where you think as-built drawings may land in all of this? So as-built drawings will no longer be a PDF that's been marked up with a little bit of red texter. This is a really positive response. So an as-built set of drawings, the expectation is that they will match exactly the issued for construction documentation. So there'll be a one-on-one. -on -one. If there's 200 in the pack here for the issued for construction, there'll be 200 in the pack here for the as-built. That means that there'll be a clear comparison between the two and this, this technology to overlay and we'll be able to clearly see if there's anything that's different between the two of them. So this is a major step forward. It's certainly an interesting time because we're seeing this uh, coincidence of technology and changing the game all arriving at the same time. So how do we make your fellow professionals enthusiastic and inspired to say we have a brighter new future as professionals? Oh, I think we're already there. Um, we've actually been very upset over a long period of time to see the demise of the construction industry. If I can sort of pull you way back to when I was at university, I remember one of my lectures saying to me that design is an incredibly important aspect. So architectural design, you can do the most brilliant design possible, and this is really important, and, and um, quality of design isn't actually, architectural design isn't covered in this bill, that's, that's another element. But unless you can actually work with really good builders, and tradespeople, you can't end up with the right quality. So the point of that is that we all need to work as a team. It means that we don't want an environment where it's appointing that he or she is responsible. We all need to take responsibility for our component and there's nothing more than the architectural community wants than to actually produce good quality documents because it's only with good quality documents you can actually end up with a better outcome in terms of the built income. Well, I think we can see a universal uh, agreement that uh, business as usual is not going to be uh, what the new game in town is. So um, it's been an incredibly exciting uh, period of time to work with you on this. Thank you very much for coming in and sharing that with us. Well, David, thank you for the time to work with you and for your team. We're all an excellent team. We're looking forward to a new, new moment in construction.